In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about promises, but not the kind we make to friends, family, and or partners who've been shot by the bad guy one day before they were about to retire from the police force. No, these promises are built to reduce the problem one runs into when developing applications with a lot of nested callbacks, which has been colorfully and appropriately named Callback Hell. It looks something like this. That's horrible, right? Promises allow you to write code that sits and waits for a return to value, and then does stuff to it, while the rest of your code is moving on with its life. I'm going to show you some examples, but to do that we need to create an asynchronous function that, well, takes some time. The easiest way to do this is with JavaScript's built-in setTimeout method, so that's what we're going to do. But this is equally applicable to, say, a function that hits a database and has to wait a while to retrieve a large chunk of data, or an XHR call to a slow API. Let's get rid of this thing, and start with some data. And here's some code that's not going to work. When we console log this, it's just going to log 1, which is basically the JavaScript engine going, yeah, your timer is running, way to go. The timer variable doesn't actually receive the returned data. That's not how set timeout works. But even if it did, your console.log would have executed long before the two second delay. So that's a problem. This is how we fix it. This is going to wait two seconds and then log all of the names. As you can see, we execute on the promise using then, so get data dot then is literally exactly what it sounds like. Get the data and then run a function. This is awesome because it's non-blocking. Other parts of our app can keep on doing their thing and whenever the promise resolves, the function we pass to then will run. ES2015 promises have two built-in parameters, resolve and reject. You call resolve when things go right, and call reject when they don't. Reject isn't very useful with a simple set timeout since it's not going to fail unless we force it to, but with XHR calls or DB writes it's vital, since those resources can easily fail to return what you want. Here's an example of handling a rejection with catch. Since we're forcing a reject, this will warn with the error. There we go. Data not found. See how we can string then and catch? We can also string more than one then by returning a value which creates a new promise, like this. Let's see what that does. Exactly what we thought it would do. ES2015 promises are very useful and very powerful, and ES2017 makes them even better with its introduction of async await. And with that, I bet you can guess the subject of next week's tutorial. See you there.